Have you ever felt like someone is draining your energy? Malicious people have specific behaviors that if not recognized in time, can cause significant harm in your life. In this video, we will show you the 12 typical behaviors of malicious people. Knowing these signs is crucial for protecting yourself and maintaining healthy relationships. Now, if you are new here, please like the video and subscribe. Statistics show that only 15% of my audience is subscribed to the channel. So if this content has helped you in any way, I ask you to subscribe and hit the notification bell. Now, let's start this transformative journey together. 1. Constant Manipulation Have you ever felt like someone is leading you where they want without you realizing it? Welcome to the fascinating and dangerous world of manipulation. The first warning sign in our detector of bad people is manipulation. Imagine playing chess, but your opponent changes the rules at their whim without you noticing. That's how subtle manipulation can be. According to Dr. Harry Breaker, author of Who's Pulling Your Strings? Manipulation is the exercise of hidden or indirect influence over another person to behave in a way that favors the manipulator's interests. But how do you recognize a manipulator in action? Pay attention to these common tactics. 1. Emotional guilt. If you really loved me, you would do this for me. 2. Gaslighting. Making you doubt your own perception of reality. 3. Victimhood. Always being the victim in every situation. The Stoic philosopher Epictetus said, It is not things that disturb us, but our opinions about them. Manipulators are experts at distorting our opinions for their benefit. A study published in the Journal of Personality and Social Psychology revealed that people with manipulative tendencies often score high in narcissism and Machiavellianism. What a combo! But not all is lost. Here are some strategies to deal with manipulation. 1. Set clear boundaries. A simple no can be your best shield. 2. Trust your intuition. If something doesn't add up, it's probably for a good reason. 3. Seek support. Talk to trusted friends for perspective. Psychologist George Simon suggests that the best defense against manipulation is knowledge. So congratulations, you're already taking the first step. Remember, not all people who occasionally manipulate are bad. Sometimes we all can fall into these tactics without realizing it. The key is to recognize them and work on ourselves to improve. As Marcus Aurelius would say, soon you will have forgotten everything. Soon everything will have forgotten you. So don't obsess over manipulators, but keep your eyes wide open. 2. The Art of Never Apologizing Get ready for the second warning sign, the art of never apologizing. Do you know someone who is always right, even when they are wrong? This fascinating phenomenon is more common than you think, and according to experts, can be an indicator of deeper problems. Imagine for a moment that life is a big game of monopoly. We all make mistakes, occasionally landing on go to jail, but there are players who seem to believe they have a permanent get-out-of-jail-free card. These are the masters of the art of never apologizing. Psychologist Robert Enright, a pioneer in the study of forgiveness, notes that the inability to apologize is often related to a fragile ego and a deep fear of vulnerability. It's as if these people wear emotional armor that prevents them from acknowledging their mistakes. But what does Stoic philosophy say about this? Marcus Aurelius, in his Meditations, reminds us, the best revenge is not to be like your enemy. In other words, if someone doesn't apologize to you, the best response is not to fall into the same pattern. How do you identify these apology-averse individuals? Here are some clues. 1. They always have a ready excuse. 2. They divert blame to others or circumstances. 3. They minimize the impact of their actions. 
A study published in the Journal of Personality and Social Psychology revealed that people with narcissistic traits are significantly less likely to offer sincere apologies. Surprise, but not all is lost. If you find yourself dealing with someone like this, or worse, if you recognize yourself in this description, here are some tips. 1. Practice empathy. Try to understand why they find it so hard to apologize. 2. Set clear boundaries. Don't let the lack of apologies become the norm. Remember, acknowledging our mistakes doesn't make us weak. It makes us human. So the next time you feel the words I'm sorry stuck in your throat, think about this. Do you prefer to be right or happy? Sometimes a simple apology can be the bridge to healthier and more satisfying relationships. Lack of empathy. Now let's move on to the next sign. Have you ever encountered someone who seems to have a heart of stone? Well, we're facing the third sign of our bad people detector, lack of empathy. This characteristic is like an invisible wall that separates some individuals from the rest of humanity. Imagine for a moment that you're in a world where no one can feel what you feel. Terrifying, right? Well, that's how people who lack empathy live. Psychologist Daniel Goleman describes empathy as the ability to tune in emotionally with others. Without it, human relationships become cold and superficial. But how do you identify someone who lacks empathy? Here are some clues. 1. They react with indifference to the suffering of others. 2. They have difficulty understanding others' perspectives. 3. They often make insensitive comments without realizing it. A study conducted by the University of Michigan revealed that empathy levels among college students have decreased by 40% over the past 30 years. It seems we're facing an epidemic of stone hearts, but not all is lost. The good news is that empathy can be cultivated. According to several studies, practicing active listening and putting yourself in others' shoes can significantly increase our empathetic capacity. What should you do if you encounter someone who seems to have the heart of an iceberg? Here are some tips. 1. Don't take it personally. Remember that this person's lack of empathy reflects more about them than about you. 2. Don't expect them to change overnight. Empathy is like a muscle. It needs time and practice to develop. 3. Lead by example. Sometimes, showing empathy can inspire others to do the same. Remember, we all have days when it's hard to put ourselves in others' shoes. The key is to recognize it and work on it. As the Dalai Lama said, If you want others to be happy, practice compassion. If you want to be happy, practice compassion. And speaking of practice, how about we do a little exercise? The next time you encounter someone who gets on your nerves, try to imagine what might be going on in their life for them to act that way. You might be surprised by what you discover. 4. Constant creation of conflicts. Let's move on to the fourth warning sign in our bad people detector. Constant creation of conflicts. Have you ever felt like you're in the middle of a constant storm where conflicts arise out of nowhere? These malicious people are like drama directors, provoking disagreements as if they were fireworks on a quiet night. Sometimes their motivation is pure fun. Other times it's a tactic to divert attention from their own flaws. It's as if they have a radar to detect peace and feel the urgent need to destroy it. Psychologist John Gottman, known for his research on relationships, identifies this behavior as one of the four horsemen of the apocalypse in interpersonal relationships. He calls it contempt, and it's a form of conflict that goes beyond simple arguing. But how does this affect those around them? Imagine living in a house where the walls constantly tremble. That's the toxic environment created by these individuals. Peace and harmony become distant concepts, replaced by an atmosphere charged with tension. Writer Ryan Holiday, in his book The Obstacle is the Way, reminds us 
Calm is contagious. Unfortunately, chaos is too, and these people are like a virus of conflict, infecting every interaction and relationship around them. So, how do we deal with people like this? Here are some strategies. 1. Don't feed the drama. Remember, it takes two to tango in conflict. 2. Practice stoic indifference. Marcus Aurelius would say, choose not to be harmed and you won't be. 3. Seek allies. Surround yourself with people who value peace as much as you do. Recognizing these conflict artists is the first step to protecting yourself. As Carl Jung said, what you resist persists, what you accept transforms. Accept that these people exist, but don't let their internal chaos become your external reality. 5. Constant lying. Imagine for a moment that you're building a house. Each brick represents a truth, a shared experience, a moment of trust. Now, what would happen if someone started replacing those bricks with balloons painted to look like bricks? Exactly. Sooner or later, everything would come crashing down. Lies are like those balloons disguised as bricks. They may seem harmless at first, even useful on occasion, but in the long run, they undermine the foundations of any relationship. Stoic philosopher Seneca said that honesty is an essential virtue that upholds the foundations of solid and healthy relationships. Can you imagine Seneca at a family gathering where everyone lies about who ate the last piece of cake? He would probably leave the room in philosophical protest. But seriously, constant lying is not just a bad habit, it's a warning sign. Lies can take many forms, from small white lies to elaborate stories worthy of a spy movie. The problem is that over time, they become a sort of personal language for the liar, leaving you trying to decipher a constantly changing code. Some people choose to live in this labyrinth of lies. Sometimes it's to manipulate, other times to hide harmful behaviors, and occasionally simply because they've forgotten how to be honest. It's as if they've lost the instruction manual for the truth and are improvising on the fly. But how can you detect a compulsive liar? Here are some clues. You have now reached the halfway mark of the video. I congratulate you for trying to become a better version of yourself and I also humbly ask you to leave a comment, as it helps my channel immensely. If you do not know what to comment, just write mind over body, so I know you reached this far. And don't forget to subscribe for more content like this. Also, I've linked some books on Stoicism that helped me become the man I am today and will also help you achieve a Stoic mindset. 1. Inconsistencies in their stories. If you notice that the details of their tales change frequently, you might be dealing with a liar. 2. Avoiding eye contact. While not a hard and fast rule, many people tend to avoid direct eye contact when lying. 3. Changes in body language. Watch for gestures like touching their nose, rubbing their neck, or crossing their arms. These can be signs of discomfort when lying. 4. Evasive answers. If someone constantly avoids answering your questions directly, they might be hiding something. 5. Difficulty telling the story backward. An interesting trick is to ask the person to recount their story in reverse order. Liars often struggle with this because they're making it up as they go along. What can we do about it? First, recognize the signs. If someone constantly changes their version of events, if their stories don't add up, or if you have a constant feeling that something is off, it's time to pay attention. It's not about becoming a private detective, but trusting your intuition. Second, and perhaps most importantly, cultivate your own honesty. Be that solid brick in the wall of truth. Not only will you feel better about yourself, but you'll also inspire others to be more honest. Remember, identifying someone who lies constantly is not about judging, but about protecting yourself. 
It's like having an umbrella on a rainy day. You can't avoid the rain, but at least you won't get soaked. To six, exaggerated reactions. Imagine being with someone who explodes in exaggerated reactions whenever they are criticized or contradicted. This behavior is like turning on a red warning light, the sixth sign that cannot be underestimated when identifying a problematic person in your life. Imagine a pressure cooker about to explode. That's how people who explode at the slightest criticism are. This exaggerated reaction is like an emotional earthquake that shakes everything around it. Sound familiar? Why do some people react so disproportionately? The answer lies within. These emotional outbursts are often a reflection of deep insecurities and a fragile self-esteem. It's as if any criticism is a direct threat to their identity. The ability to accept criticism maturely is an indicator of emotional maturity and self-awareness. When someone cannot handle criticism, it's as if they are trapped in a cycle of constant denial and defense. A study conducted by the University of Michigan found that people who react disproportionately to criticism tend to have lower levels of emotional well-being and more conflictive interpersonal relationships. This underscores the importance of identifying this behavior and addressing it appropriately. Remember, a healthy relationship is built on open communication and the ability to accept criticism constructively. If you encounter someone who has exaggerated reactions to criticism, it's vital to set clear boundaries and protect your emotional well-being. 7. Protagonist Syndrome Have you ever met someone who seems to believe the world revolves around them? Welcome to the fascinating and sometimes frustrating world of protagonist syndrome. This phenomenon, closely related to narcissism, is more common than you think. Imagine for a moment that life is a big play. The person with protagonist syndrome always sees themselves as the main character, relegating everyone else to mere supporting actors or extras in their grand production. Sounds fun, right? Well, not so much if you're one of those extras. From a psychological perspective, narcissism goes beyond simply loving oneself. Dr. C. Marlin, a Harvard psychologist, describes it as an addiction to feeling special. It's as if these people have an insatiable hunger for admiration and attention. History is full of figures who could have been diagnosed with this syndrome. Think of Napoleon Bonaparte, for example, the man literally crowned himself emperor. Imagine the level of confidence needed to do something like that. Or consider Louis XIV of France, who supposedly said, I am the state. Clearly these guys didn't suffer from low self-esteem. How do you deal with these people in your daily life? Here are some tricks. 1. Set clear boundaries. People with protagonist syndrome often try to invade your space. Don't be afraid to say no. 2. Don't feed their ego. Avoid excessive flattery. An occasional compliment is fine, but don't make it your full-time job. 3. Find common ground. Despite their egocentrism, even narcissists can form meaningful connections if you find shared interests. Remember, it's not about changing these people. Spoiler alert, you probably can't, but learning to navigate their turbulent waters without sinking. Here's the revised and corrected version of your text. We all have a bit of the protagonist within us. Yes, even you. The next time you find yourself thinking you're the center of the universe, take a breath and remember, you're a star, yes, but in a galaxy full of them. So. The next time you're on the stage of life with someone who seems to want all the spotlight for themselves, take a deep breath, smile, and remember, they may think it's their show, but you decide your role in it. And who knows, you might find that being an extra has its advantages. At least you don't have to memorize as many lines. 8. The Art of Taking Advantage of Others have you ever had the feeling that someone only approaches you when they need something? 
Let's dive into the art of taking advantage of others, not to practice it, but to detect it and defend ourselves. Imagine life is a big game of chess. Opportunists are those players who are always looking to sacrifice their pawns, that is, you, to advance their game. But don't worry, today we'll turn you into a bishop, or better yet, a queen capable of seeing through their moves. Stoic philosopher Seneca said, he who takes advantage of another's misfortune is not far from desiring it. And boy, was he right. Opportunists often have a radar to detect vulnerabilities and don't hesitate to exploit them. Sound familiar? Someone who only calls you when they need a favor. But not everything is black and white in the world of opportunism. Sometimes we can all fall into opportunistic behaviors without realizing it. The key is intention and frequency. It's one thing to ask for help occasionally, and quite another to have a hidden agenda in every interaction. How can we protect ourselves from these emotional vampires without becoming hermits? Here are some tips. 1. Value your time and energy. You don't have to be everyone's lifeguard. 2. Practice reciprocity. If someone only takes and never gives, it's time to rethink the relationship. 3. Surround yourself with people who value peace as much as you do. Remember, identifying someone who constantly lies is not about judging, but about protecting yourself. It's like having an umbrella on a rainy day. You can't avoid the rain, but at least you won't get soaked. 9. Constant lack of respect for boundaries. Have you ever felt that your personal boundaries are respected as much as a red light by an impatient driver? Well, friends, Welcome to our next sign in our bad people detector, constant lack of respect for boundaries. Imagine for a moment that your personal space is like your favorite garden. Now, what would happen if someone decided to use it as their personal playground without your permission? Frustrating, right? Well, that's how it feels when someone constantly ignores your boundaries. Famous psychologist Carl Rogers once said, the only path worth taking is the one that leads to being oneself. But how can we be ourselves if someone is constantly invading our space? Malicious people often see boundaries as obstacles to overcome, not lines to respect. They can invade your privacy, ignore your requests for space, or persist in behaviors that you've made clear are unacceptable. It's as if they have a PhD in ignoring social cues, but not all is lost. Here are some tips for dealing with these boundary invaders. 1. Be clear and direct. Don't leave room for interpretation. 2. Be consistent. If you give in once, it's like inviting a vampire into your home. Once inside, it will be hard to get rid of them. 3. Practice self-care. Remember, you can't control their actions, but you can control your responses. Psychologist Henry Cloud points out, boundaries define who we are and who we are not. So, the next time someone tries to trample your personal garden, gently remind them that your flowers are not for stepping on. 10. Constant criticism. Have you noticed how some people seem to have a PhD in criticizing others? Well, hold on tight because that's our next warning sign. This toxic habit can be more damaging than you think. Imagine for a moment that you're surrounded by people who only see the negative in you. How would you feel? Probably not very good. Psychologist John Gottman discovered that in healthy relationships, the ratio of positive to negative interactions should be at least five to one. When criticism exceeds this threshold, emotional well-being is seriously compromised. Throughout my life, I've had classmates and acquaintances who were authentic professional critics. I decided to distance myself completely. And you know what? It was one of the best decisions I've made. But beware, don't confuse constructive criticism with this toxic behavior. The difference lies in the intention and frequency. Constructive criticism seeks to help, while constant criticism only aims to hurt or control. Stoic Seneca reminds us, 
Choose someone whose way of living, as well as their words and even their face, which is the mirror of the soul, you like. In other words, surround yourself with people who make you happy and encourage you to grow. A study published in the Journal of Personality and Social Psychology revealed that being exposed to constant negativity can even affect our physical health. So, be careful. It's not just your mood at stake. What do we do if we find ourselves trapped in this cycle of negativity? Here are some tips. One, a simple, I appreciate your opinion, but I didn't ask for it, can work wonders. Two, practice empathy. Sometimes those who criticize the most are the ones who suffer the most inside. Three, surround yourself with positivity. Find people who inspire you and make you feel good. Ilveven, lack of responsibility. Have you ever encountered someone who seems to have an excuse for everything? Imagine playing the game of life, but every time you land on a bad square, instead of going back, you blame the dice, the board, or even the dog that walked by. That's how people who evade their responsibility act. Lack of responsibility is like an artist's escape. These people can slip out of any uncomfortable situation faster than a magician disappearing in a cloud of smoke. They always have a ready excuse, as if they had an automatic justification generator in their brain. But why is this attitude so dangerous? Well, imagine building a house with someone who never admits to having nailed a crooked nail. In the end, you'll have a shaky house and probably a good dose of frustration. Lack of responsibility not only affects the person practicing it, but everyone around them. It's like a virus that infects relationships, creating an environment of distrust and resentment. How do you identify someone who evades responsibility? Here are some clues. One, they always have a ready excuse. Two, they blame others for their mistakes. 3. They constantly victimize themselves. 4. They change the subject when asked to account for their actions. If you know someone who frequently does these things, you might be dealing with a professional responsibility evader. But not all is lost. If you've realized that you yourself fall into some of these behaviors, congratulations. Recognizing it is the first step to change. Remember, we all make mistakes. The difference lies in how we handle them. Responsibility is like a muscle. The more you exercise it, the stronger it gets. So the next time you feel tempted to blame traffic for being late, take a deep breath and ask yourself, what can I do differently next time? 12. The pursuit of revenge or punishment. Have you ever encountered someone who can't let go of even the slightest offense? Well, today we delve into the last sign of our bad people detector, the constant pursuit of revenge or punishment. Imagine a person who holds a grudge as if it were their most precious treasure. These people have enormous difficulty handling criticism or rejection. Instead of accepting comments or respecting others' decisions, they embark on a mission of retaliation worthy of an action movie. But beware! It's not always as evident as a Hollywood villain. Sometimes it manifests in more subtle ways. Rumors, sabotage of opportunities, or even manipulation of relationships. It's as if they have a radar to detect offenses and an arsenal of negative responses ready to fire. What's most curious is that several studies have revealed that vengeful people often experience high levels of stress and very low emotional well-being. It's like drinking poison and expecting it to harm someone else. The key is to stay calm and not feed their need for conflict. Remember, their behavior says more about them than about you. Now that you know these signs, the key is in your hands. Apply this knowledge to protect yourself and cultivate healthier relationships. If any part of this message has been helpful to you, leave us a like and comment helping the algorithm recommend it to someone who needs it at this time. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss new videos. 
and if you look through the videos we've already uploaded, you're sure to find something to take with you. Have a good day.